Greetings, my rare hunters. It is I, Marrick. And welcome back to another episode of Knights of the Old Republic 2, The Sith Lords Restored Content. On the last episode, we got a lightsaber built after we were almost assaulted by a force ghost. So now we look like a total badass. And we left off right outside this security door. Let's see if we can get inside. Who the hell is this guy? Your arrival is fortunate. I was just running out of food supplies and wondering what Legrec meat would taste like. Um, that's a new line. He's never said that before. I wasn't expecting to find anyone else here alive. I am an historian and scientist working for the Republic. Although I'm certain my contemporaries would judge me more a historian than scientist. Hmm. You look familiar. As if I've seen your face before. I imagine in your travels of the galaxy you've seen many people. Faces tend to blur together after a time. What else would you like to know? What happened to the Jedi? No. It is something of a mystery why they would exile themselves as they have. It is not the way of the Jedi to vanish in such a way. Especially when the Republic is in need of them. I fear that there is something else at work. Something that we cannot see. Then again, perhaps the Jedi are hiding simply because so many people hate them these days. Why though? It is difficult sometimes for the Jedi to see such things. Since much of it is rooted in human nature. And the Jedi are often removed from events of daily life. Insulated. But the reason the Jedi Civil War was named such was because few in the galaxy can recognize the difference between the Sith and the Jedi. To them, they are both Jedi with different philosophies. I mean, I can kind of understand that a little bit. Not always. Jedi often fall. They cause much harm on Onderon, for example, in the name of peace and protection. Uleg Keldroma and Exar Kun, the two Dark Lords during the Sith War many decades ago, were once Jedi Knights, as were Revan and Malak. It is perhaps more amazing that some still trust Jedi after many have fallen and endangered the galaxy. It is also proof that a single Force wielder can change the face of the galaxy. And that is a frightening thing indeed. It is indeed. A very terrifying thing to think about. But do you hate the Jedi? Hate? No. I do not hate them. They only raise questions without answers. Jedi are not supposed to be like the rest of us. They are supposed to see a higher purpose in all things. And they are supposed to train students responsibly and well, so mistakes of the past are not repeated. Yet all I saw was ignorance and arrogance, what those seeds created in the Republic. It is difficult to follow the Jedi Code when so few others have. But you know this. What do you mean by that? Many Jedi defy the Order during the Mandalorian Wars, and it paved the way for the Jedi Civil War. And do you blame the Jedi or the Council? There is no blame. All must accept. But... At its core, one must wonder if it was the failure of the Jedi teachings or the teachers themselves. Many of the Jedi Council trained Exar Kun, Ulik, Revan, and Malak. How could they not see the danger they posed? And if they could not, perhaps there was some essential part of their teachings that was flawed. Something beyond the Jedi Code that they were missing. I think... I think the Jedi Code was fine. I think it's the, the people being ignorant fools. That was their problem. I am not certain you understand what happened with Revan. Do you wish me to explain? Okay. Revan was captured in the middle of the Jedi Civil War, due in no small part to his apprentice, Malak, who turned on him. Revan was brought before the Jedi Council and put on trial. You must understand that the situation was desperate. And the Jedi needed to know how Revan had amassed the forces arrayed against them. As I understand it, they were able to convince Revan to have a change of heart. Revan helped the Republic defeat Malak. 
Perhaps in his conversation with the Jedi Masters, they were able to convince him of the rightness of their actions. Haha! <laughs> nope, that's not even close to what happened! Revan had many Masters. Zar, Dorak, Master K before K left for the wars. Towards the end of his training, he sought out many to learn techniques. It is said that he returned to his first master at the end of his training, in order to learn how he might best leave the Order. Really? Well, I want to ask something else. What else would you like to know? Why do you work for the Republic? I'm trying to save the Republic. Dantooine and the Jedi Order are instrumental to that effort. Despite the troubles of the Jedi Civil War, there are those among the Republic who still favor the Jedi and wish them to return. And there are admirals within the fleet who recognize that the Jedi must be found if the Republic is to hold together. Yet as long as Onderon remains within the Republic and the efforts on Tilo succeed, that is all that matters. Why Tilos and Onderon? The Republic is fragile right now. Telos is important because its success will determine whether or not the other dead worlds receive the same reconstruction efforts. If Telos is rebuilt and made habitable again, it will affect a string of worlds along the rim. And what about Onderon? Onderon, strangely enough, was unaffected by the Jedi Civil War. It's almost as if Revan didn't want to attack it. Its resources and position on the rim make it a vital supply line and guard post against outer rim attacks. Also, it's the only world in the Republic still capable of seeding ecosystems into other dead worlds. Onderon's wildlife is some of the most aggressive in the known galaxy. Merely placing some of those beasts on target worlds will guarantee their habitation for years to come. So then why is Dantooine important? Dantooine was one of the few Republic worlds on the Outer Rim. It is why the Republic is attempting to get the settlement up and running. Dantooine is within reach of several other Rim worlds, and the Republic will need it as a resupply post if they are to keep a presence on the Rim. Okay, well this has been fun, but I'll be going now. Before you go, I had a question for you. You came to Dantooine in search of Jedi. Why? Um, hmm. Well, the Sith are kind of awake in the galaxy, and I kind of need some help just a little bit. If the Sith are rising in the galaxy again, then it is strange that Jedi would not be there to meet them, and that we have not seen more evidence of the Sith. Oh, well, trust me, they're out there. They've been being a pain in my ass for the past 15 episodes. No, I believe you. I merely find such subtleties among the Sith to be strange. They have been known to practice deception. But in the histories, since the time of the Dark Lords Kuhn and Keldroma, and Revan and Malak, such subtleties have been rare. I will return to Kunda now and await the next transport. You may find me there if you have more questions. Okay, bye. It's almost as if he was another Force Ghost. Three dead mercenaries lie here, accompanied by signs of combat. And I clicked through the, the other line of dialogue. Whoops. This data pad contains orders from Azkul, the leader of the mercenaries on Dantooine. Vrook has wandered into the Enclave alone. You will take a full squad and capture the Jedi alive. Bring him to our nook in the Kinrat Caves to await transport to Nar Shadda. He will fetch a fine bounty. Oh hell no, you're not stealing him. If I can't have him, you can't. Hell no to that shit. Besides, finding him should allow me to get another lightsaber. And I, I can't have you taking that away from me. Okay, whoa, that's a lot of bugs. Hold on a second. Stop using flamethrower! See, look, we don't even have any, like, 
any other power crystals in this lightsaber, and it's already doing an ass ton more damage than the Vibro Blade. Bam, bam, bam. And I freaking love the music in this game. Stop. Let's make this look more realistic. Atten, can you, like, move? There we go. Look at that. Right through the friggin' door. And there's some, there's some mines there. This journal was found near the gnawed clean skeleton of a salvager. That's pretty dark. The last entry is of interest. I made it farther into the enclave than any other salvager. I've discovered an untouched storage room. The computer in the power relay station should allow me to open the security door. Once I figure out how to sneak past the Lagrex that have made a nest there, I will leave Dantooine rich! Well, you're not leaving at all, but maybe now I can leave rich. These things are some of the most annoying enemies in the game. Let's get this over with. They regenerate health during battle. They're giant ugly ass bugs. They know flamethrower in the modded version. I swear, I really do not remember them shooting fire in the original game. And I had the original game for Xbox. I played the shit out of it. Oh, well, more bugs. Hey, Atten, wait! Don't just run in here. I am proud of you, though. Instead of being a runaway coward, you went straight for the enemy. Task 1046B. I'm here investigating complaints of the storage room door sticking shut following a recent mishap with a defective flaming protocol droid. Well, that's the problem right there. He should not have been flaming at all. My assistant Tarn will be on hand to open the door for me if I get stuck in the storage room. I'm going to assume that did not happen. Open the door. Okay. Blow it up. Uh, ten seconds. Okay, fucking run. I don't actually know how far we have to be. This should be close enough. Close enough? This should be far enough. Like we're even standing single file line. Okay, we heard the ship blow up. So now we should be able to go in here. It's already open. Look, there's the body. Yep, that's him. This is the work pad of Durger Chester, the late head technician of the Jedi Enclave. There is a personal note written here. It's been a couple weeks and no one has come for me. I can only assume the Enclave was destroyed topside and now I'm buried alive in here. I've tried using the equipment in this storage room to hack, force, weld, or blow that flaming security door open, but nothing I've tried works, and now I'm running out of food. It's a Jedi security door. Of course it's going to be immune to shit normal people could use. If you'd had a lightsaber, you know, maybe. But since you won't be needing these items, I'll go ahead and take them for myself. 
And we'll make sure they're put to good use. I do- I feel kinda bad for him, though. Death by starvation doesn't sound very fun. Although... I don't- wouldn't that room run out of air before he starved to death? I don't know. I- I'm not a... I'm not- I'm not a science person. You found a will on this salvager. The will states that all of his possessions are to be left to the other dead salvager you found. Darla... Darala would no doubt be interested in getting her hands on the salvager's bodies and the will. Hmm. Probably. We're not gonna tamper with the will, though. I don't like to disrespect the dead people. Well, not all the dead people. They didn't do any harm to me, so... I mean, even the villain can have, you know, a bit of a heart. There has to be something beating inside. I think this door just kind of goes, like, around. Yeah, that, it doesn't, it doesn't even do anything. Obey, oh, der I need you to put yourself at risk and risk blowing off your, off your other arm. Thank you. Look! More things to steal! Actually, I'm not even stealing them, because everybody here is dead. They belong to no one. 39 credits. What the hell do I buy with 39 credits? A bladed plating mark two. I still need an outer layer to go ahead and equip to this robe. Perhaps I'll find one so that thing was there the whole time, and I didn't know it. Wow. He could have been the only surviving leg wreck in the sublevels. Ah, ah, but the lock-on system caught on to him. Oh, hey, look. More trash. Hello, trash. Braved the perils of the sublevel, yes. Many stories and artifacts in your possession. This is fortuitous for myself and associates. For now, not only do I get rich salvage, but an even richer bounty. Do not be making this difficult. Your death can be quite painless. You know, I actually forgot to talk to him. If you try talking to him when you're in Kunda, he's a complete dick. And that's why I super enjoy killing him here. Ah, uh, but I forgot to do that. But that's okay, because his death won't be painless. So, this is your threat? Is Terra what I'm supposed to feel? We know a thing about Jedi and their ways. And now, Jedi, we shall fight. The way he talks pisses me off. I'm just gonna melt everybody with force fight. I said I'm going to melt everybody with force. There we go. There you go. And he had some things I can take. Thank you. Alright, I was actually a little worried we wouldn't get out of there in this episode. I don't know why. I guess I expected the Disciple to sit there and ramble longer than he had. Alright, got a few bones to pick with you people. When a visitor comes to our delightful salvager camp. We are honored. Do you come bringing your credits and curiosity? Ha! 
get to the point. Brevity is indeed an understated virtue. I will get to, as you say, my point. A question I pose to you, Traveler. Do you wish to buy one of the most elusive of all Jedi artifacts? A powerful Jedi holocron. Ha! You found a holocron? You flatter me, Traveler. It was a good day when I found this holocron. But you are lucky, for I will sell it to you for a low price. I ask a mere 1,000 credits for this rare find. This is not a matter of negotiation. You should buy it quickly before others come. Can I inspect the holocron? Perhaps it's broken. Oh, I assure you it isn't. I will show it to you presently. Well, as you can see, it is in fine shape. A real bargain at a mere 1,000 credits. That is a remarkable fake. But it's not even worth the time you've wasted describing it. How, how'd you know? Well, I never unload this accursed thing. This isn't my fault. You can't blame me. <laughs> That's all you have to say? This forgery has passed through several hands in this camp. I am merely the latest victim. I wish to abandon this dumb heap. Ha! Well, actually, I am holding you responsible. By force. And when I say force, I mean force. Uh, I apologize immensely. Surely you recognize that uh, attacking me here will pose problems. The militia and the salvagers will hunt you. Ha! <laughs> Give me that fake holocron. I will not. Very well. Take it. Leave me to my poverty, my suffering. Don't ever try to fool me again, you fool. Now for my next victim. It's you again. Uh, thanks for helping me out down there. I really hope the Jedi salvage you bought was worth it. I meant what I said about no returns, though. I need the money to go home. But it's nice to see you again, regardless. Oh, but it won't be. Because you won't be going home. All of us salvagers know about that. I'd ask Darala, though. She's talked with the militia the most about it. If you ask me, the thief isn't human. It's one of those smart Legrex. All right, we're going to go back to Kunda. And we're going to see. I want to help that guy out, the farmer. I know that guy's the one that took it. But does me buying the shit from him automatically make me... Did it ruin the chance to get this guy's shit back? Or did I buy it? Did I pay? I, I don't know. We'll go find out either way. Bam, bam, bam. I'm sorry, I love this color lightsaber. It distracts me from what I'm intending to do. Admiral, this is Mikal. I have found the exile. He doesn't look very happy. Why is he talking to Karth about me? Oh, hello. Any luck on getting my modulator back? I found your thief. Excellent. How did you deal with Jorin? Your thief wasn't Joran or a salvager. It has to be someone near their camp, and no one else lives around them. You might be right, but I doubt it. The salvagers have been hit by this thief, too. Are they turning on their own? Typical. That's about all I know. I've never seen the thief clearly. Do you have any idea who it is? It was a young woman scarred by the war. Really? So wait, they changed it? I thought it was Joran. So it wasn't Joran? What the, just when I'm getting to the end of the episode, it has to throw me a curveball that I didn't hit, and it hit me in the side of my shit. Really? So it isn't a salvager. Well, the war. The war affected different people different ways. Is she gonna be all right? It's hard to say. Healing is a difficult process. 
I guess I had it all wrong. I thought those salvagers were to blame. They, they, look, if you see her again, tell her maybe we can work something out. I need help on my farm. She's already shown she knows something about farming equipment. I know a lot of people that need a second chance right about now. Perhaps. About my reward. Wow, I'm a dick. Here's your reward. Finally, I can get back to work. Thanks for the help. I plan on going. Can I find that girl again? And, you know, tell her, be like, hey, this guy wants you to work for him. I... I don't know. I'm I'm really not sure. All right, but so after that nice little encounter, we're going to wrap this episode up here. Uh if you enjoyed learning something new along with this or you know, just you were expecting it all along cuz you already knew this stuff happened, make sure you hit that like button down below for us. You know, we appreciate the support. We appreciate the new subscribers as well. Hope you guys are having a great time. Uh, we're gonna get the freak out of here there. Wait, wait! Too much happened. Always remember to save your game. Because if you were to lose that data, it would be a shame. So now we're gonna get the freak out of here. And we'll see you guys in the next episode.